The lack of a change machine, as I recall, in uh, uh, East Tech V, as uh, the building we're now located in was then called. Uh, that was in uh, June. Uh, it was quite a good start, I thought. Uh, in, in July, we had the great fortune to have Greg Riker join us uh, from Electronic Arts as Director of Development. Uh, and I remember the next group meeting where Bruce again complained about the lack of the change machine in Building 13. <laughs> that was quite a, a milestone, I would say. Uh, and September was really notable uh, because the change machine was in fact installed in uh, East Tech uh, We began construction as Microsoft took ownership of the building uh, so that uh, we could uh, have the whole group uh, come together and Bruce began complaining about the construction dirt and noise, as I recall. <laughs> It was a, quite a justified uh, complaint, as I recall, because there was a lot of dust and a lot of noise uh, until November when we actually all moved into Building 13 uh, and the construction ended. Um, we had our, our first multimedia system division retreat, and it's really easy for me to remember uh, when that happened because uh, during that uh, retreat, uh, the Berlin Wall fell. Bruce, of course, complained about the noise and the dust. <laughs> well, in January, in the, the first part of the year, uh, the group uh, shifted its focus to level one. Uh, we were uh, uh, still maintaining some level of relationship with uh, IBM on the uh, level two system. And in fact, in March, uh, the IBM level two hardware arrived, just the audio part. Bruce, of course, complained about the noise and the dust. <laughs> so we sent the board back. Uh, the, as I remember, the, the next big milestone was in April, when Tandy committed to being our, our lead level one OEM. Uh, Bruce didn't complain at all, as I recall, about that. It was uh, quite, a, quite an achievement. Uh, and uh, so that was you know, just a, a, an easy way, and I really appreciate Bruce making it um, easy for me to kind of remember when various things happen. And so we come today to our, our first milestone, uh, first anniversary. Uh, not only are we having our anniversary dinner, but we have the Alpha Multimedia Windows Disc. These are the real discs that we released to manufacturing with real on uh, I'm sure that was a clean release because Bruce didn't complain about the dust or the noise. Uh, but uh, Bruce did start complaining about the art. So we have a new motif for, for, 19, uh, for fiscal year 1991. As many of you, you probably know, I just came back from a, uh, a trip, a very successful trip with Pamela Goldschmidt to Japan, and I know that there was a lot of uh, question about what we were actually accomplishing there. Uh, I came back with probably too much of a suntan, people think that it was a, a business trip. Uh, that was to Hawaii, but uh, we actually did do a lot of important business in Japan. I wanted to, as much as I can through the aid of audio visually, show you uh, just how well we did. Uh, this was a place that we visited, which, if you all can see, um, that's it's the Cafe API. <laughs> okay, and this that that's a little hard to see. This is a blow up of the uh, Cafe API, uh, which um, was called the Cafe API Illuminae, I think. Um, and uh, it was we just we had some work to do there. Uh, it was actually uh, worked out well. We renamed it the Cafe Resume. <laughs> So we were able to use that RES prefix that uh, many of you graciously uh, enabled us to use. Which we're so appreciative of. Well, moving forward in the, in the next year, uh, obviously we, we're in a, a great position to build on the achievements of uh, releasing the, uh, the Level 1 uh, Multimedia Windows System software. Probably the, the biggest key for us uh, is to stay the course. It is to complete our level one plan. Uh, we've got uh, a, a really solid amount of uh, momentum building. We spent about four and a half hours this morning with the, the, the chairman of TANI, John Roach, and, and uh, we were really heartened by his commitment, uh, not only uh, for the short term, uh, but really for the long haul. Uh, TANI is really looking at the multimedia PC not as a one off product, but as an entry point. Uh, into a long-term opportunity. Uh, and that level of commitment, not just from Tandy, but from uh, the other uh, OEMs around the world, uh, really provides us a great launch point for our efforts. And, uh, we're very grateful for that support and work very hard uh, every day to, to strengthen and sustain that. Uh, in particular, Tandy's uh, communicated something that uh, Pamela and I heard a lot when we were in Japan, which uh, is something that we've noted the back of our mind is important, which is to really begin starting to think about not just uh, level one systems as they are today, 
but really taking the technology and pushing it harder in the direction of consumer electronics and beginning to develop uh, multi-media players, uh, which uh, requires a lot of ingenuity, uh, not just in our system software and making sure that everything runs really uh, well in that environment, but also in our tools where instead of being able to count on uh, a hard disk and a floppy and a lot of the amenities of a PC, you have a much more focused environment. Uh, when Tandy, Tandy basically said they thought they could sell hundreds of thousands of systems if we were able to get the price and the system set up right, and that was incredibly exciting. One of the, to me, one of the most heartening uh, experiences in the last couple of weeks, uh, particularly coupled with the, the same we got, uh, from, the, uh, from the Japanese folks. In order to make all this happen, we have to do a great job to build application momentum, uh, both in our own work, uh, in terms of the system software and the tools, uh, working with other parts of Microsoft, the multi publishing group, the various applications groups, and probably even more importantly, uh, supporting and working with outside developers. Uh, it's an incredibly hard challenge. If you look at any new platform that, that's come out, like the Macintosh or the Windows uh, environment, of course, we all think of Windows environment as a great crescendo now, but it was uh, seven years ago when we first started. Uh, those platforms almost always come out naked. And for something like the Macintosh, where you have the exuberance of Steve Jobs, uh, plus it's a really innovative machine, and you've got you know a billion dollar corporation, Apple, really standing behind it, but you can afford a couple of lean, uh, lean years, and it almost put Apple under, in fact. Uh, for our system, which is based on a read-only medium, a CD, uh, we can't afford that. We've got to make sure that there are great applications um, in, uh, in the pipeline now and available uh, by the time we ship. That's real hard because Microsoft will only develop a small percentage of the applications that are needed. Uh, so that means we've got to do great tools, we've got to do great marketing to ISVs, it means we've got to support developers in really uh, innovative and unusual uh, ways, which is one of the great reasons we got Matt involved in that. Uh, and uh, really going to have to uh, do a lot better at something that's very hard uh, than anybody's ever done before. That is to build up momentum for a platform even before it's shipped. Uh, in essence, Microsoft is going to have to drive the creation of a multimedia business. That's probably the biggest change in the past year. We started the year uh, piggybacking on the, the back of a, of a big brother, uh, IBM. Uh, IBM is still an important potential partner, but they'll be a partner following the path that we blaze. Uh, the trade-off to me is, on the downside, uh, it puts a lot more of the responsibility in our, our court. Uh, on the upside, it's a lot more exciting. If we succeed, uh, it'll be incredible uh, what Microsoft will be able to pull off in terms of uniquely establishing not just a software platform, but the combination of a software and a hardware platform. Uh, I'm really bullish about the future. I'm incredibly optimistic about our ability to do that, uh, but it's going to be a lot of hard work. And uh, I think we'll really have to uh, work hard to uh, make sure that we uh, set ourselves up for that kind of success. But I, for one, uh, am incredibly confident we can do it and couldn't wish for a better group of people to, to give it a college try with. So I want to thank everybody for the, the fantastic efforts in the past year that have gotten us this far and look forward to uh, another uh, terrific, uh, exciting uh, year that we're actually going to launch this thing. Now, let me pass the, the baton to Bill. Uh, Bill Gates, our chairman, uh, has agreed to, uh, to say a couple of words about this area. Uh, Bill's commitment to multimedia uh, is very, very uh, longstanding and is probably the reason that we're all here today. Bill? <laughs> things I, I could explain tonight, um, like why I enjoy working with IBM, <laughs> but uh, you're all out of that at least, at least for a while. Um, I could also talk about levels 1 through 73, <laughs> but we're focused now on, on level 1. <clears throat> it's a very interesting time for this group to get together, uh, because in the last few weeks the company has achieved some great milestones. So milestones will have a, a lot of effect on the work you're doing. Uh, of course, there's your own achievement of getting the, uh, the Alpha uh, Toolkit out. Uh, that's really fantastic. There's also the shipment of uh, Microsoft Windows version 3. Uh, that's what I've been focused on the last three or four months. And I don't know how many of you got a chance to uh, see what we pulled off there, but it really was the, the most exciting announcement in the history of the company. And it, 
it is a, a milestone product for us. The reception it, it's had is uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, we shipped 100,000 copies out in the U.S. That's more than three times as much as we have any other product, uh, and it's sold out within a week. Uh, there's literally lines in computer stores, people waiting to get these copies, and we send them out. We've got manufacturing, working weekends, uh, three shifts, and we're going to build another 200,000 copies this month and see if we can catch up with the demand. So it looks like we really will transform uh, DOS-based personal computing, which is the majority of all computing in the world, by some huge amount to the graphical level. And that's important for the company. It's, it's also important for what we're trying to do in multimedia. Uh, we've been very open about this as our, as our strategy for a long time. It's kind of strange when people accuse us of having Windows as some you know, uh, underhanded strategy. Uh, I hope that someday they accuse us of having multimedia uh, as an underhanded strategy. Here we are, we're spending uh, over 10 million a year, if you count uh, the activities going on in top quarters, titles, group together with what you're doing. And of course, as a business, it's, it's a very, very small business. Uh, we're in a strong investment mode. In fact, other than the systems work around OS2 and networking, by far the largest investment companies making is in the multimedia area. One thing I'd like to underline is the, uh, the patience uh, that's gone into all the successes that, that Microsoft has had. Uh, Windows is a great example of that. We started work on uh, what was called at the time Interface Manager in 1981. Uh, we made such fantastic progress on it in the early stages that in 1983 we decided, hey, let's announce this thing. And we rounded up everyone in the industry, got them into this big barn, except IBM, uh, got them to demo the product. Uh, several years later, we actually did ship a product. Uh, about a third of the people who come to the announcement were bankrupt by then. Uh, some of them had licensed it, and their licenses had already expired. Uh, but our, our commitment was, was very clear cut. And by sticking with it, uh, what we've been able to do is very dramatic. Uh, I certainly hope in this case it's not subject to you know the third version uh, syndrome, or else we'll have about oh, five or six more of these dinners before we get, <laughs> say we hit pay dirt. Uh, but the CD-ROM activities, the multimedia activities, actually do go back a long ways. Uh, one of the, the milestones for me was when I was over in Tokyo uh, a little over seven years ago, having dinner with Raleigh Rourke. Uh, Raleigh's in the, the hardware group that are called the SPAE, the Systems Peripheral Accessory Group. He's been around Microsoft a long time. He's kind of an unusual guy because he's a guy who works for a software company that understands hardware uh, very, very well. And he was explaining to me that uh, none of his friends uh, owned personal computers, nor would they, until uh, there was a vast array of information that you could access from the machines. And he thought CD-ROM uh, might enable that to happen. Uh, well, that was quite a challenge to me since it's always been the charter of the company uh, and the vision of the company to get personal computers out in a very, very broad way. Uh, I hope you've heard a boring number of times the idea that it's, uh, uh, the vision is a personal computer on, on every desk and in every home. And in internal affairs, we add running Microsoft software. Because <laughs> that's, that's what we're we're headed for. And multimedia is a, a very necessary part of that. Uh, some of the speeches I've, I've been giving in the last six months have been titled uh, Making the Personal Computer Personal. And that's really the theme that we, we bring to, mul uh, to why multimedia is so important. We portray the PC as, as being the key tool of the information age, not the age of spreadsheets or the age of word processing, which is sort of the age of blank screens. You get to create your own stuff. Uh, but rather the age where whatever you're interested in, in, in various forms, you can get up on your screen, browse through that data, and uh, manipulate that data in ways that are relevant to you. And multimedia is a, a necessary part of personal computing when you think of it in that fashion. One thing that's very hard about, uh, about multimedia is uh, it's a, it is a dramatic change. Even talking to our applications division about why they should do the titles on the CD, it's hard for them to see it 
and it's hard for anybody to see it as more than just an evolutionary thing. You, it, it takes some imagination to see that having a thousand times as much storage, mixing in the richer images and the audio, uh, is, a, is a dramatic change. It's a generational change. And even though it's the same applications on the productivity side, by taking advantage of that story, by doing the tutorial, tutorials right, we'll really be in a uh, different age. Uh, part of what helped us get into the graphical age uh, is the Macintosh. It's one of the tricky things about the Windows 3 announcement is that uh, we actually hope Apple you know, continues to do very, very well because uh, we sell so many applications on the machine. But all the press likes to say to me, you know, aren't you going to kill Apple now? Isn't it awful? Uh, but, you know, we, we love Apple. Even in our most negative moments, uh, we say that the Macintosh has been a great demonstration machine <laughs> for Microsoft Windows. And it's in countries where the Macintosh hasn't done well, we're going to have a harder time selling uh, Windows. In your endeavor, uh, there is no Macintosh. There is no machine that's out there uh, making it clear to people what multimedia is. And so it's up to us. And the kind of evangelism that will be involved here is a lot more difficult than uh, what Apple uh, was up to. I mean, they had Xerox Park, where you could sit down and see the machines and get excited. Uh, they had some of the uh, early prototype uh, work that they did. Uh, this is a, a very difficult task. In terms of machine definition, uh, you've made great progress. It's, it's getting uh, quite concrete in terms of tools. We've made great progress. Uh, the importance of tools is actually underlined in the meeting that Rob and I had with uh, John Roach uh, today because he said that in order to have a mass market, he feels that the information titles will have to have a common interface. And when he says common interface, he means in a very strong sense. The way that you follow a link, the way that you specify a search, the way that you uh, go sequentially, the way that you expand an image or ask for audio to be played. He thinks that all those things uh, will have to be absolutely identical. And the only way I can see that will happen is if we build seminal tools that uh, a high percentage of the information providers decide to take advantage of, and then either through imitation or people coming around uh, and using our tools, that the vast percentage of the titles work exactly that way. That means that we, there are issues in the interface uh, that we haven't figured out. And I'm hoping for some very close collaboration between this group and the Multimedia Titles group uh, over the next six months, looking at, at the advanced user interface issues and making sure our, our titles uh, can address those things. Um, our commitment to this area, I, you know, I can't uh, state it uh, strongly enough. Uh, Rob came to me and uh, showed me the plans for this year. And I have to say it's the first year we've had a very uh, clear idea of what we want to get done. Some of it is, is incredibly ambitious. The evangelization, uh, getting the hardware done, exploring the idea of the player machine, uh, getting figuring out who our partners should be for that, and defining it in a way that it's not a separate evangelization effort. It's all very hard stuff. Uh, but we've got a, a clear plan, and I have to say I've, I've been very impressed with this group. Uh, it's a group that's uh, uh, grown in strength, uh, grown in enthusiasm, and I have a lot of confidence that uh, you'll meet the, the challenges of the next year. So uh, this is a chance to relax, and then Monday you can go back and do it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, before we relax, there are about a half dozen people who get to be a little bit nervous. Uh, we've got a few awards here for uh, people who's uh, contributions in the past year were uh, particularly notable uh, in a couple different areas, including one award uh, that comes from everyone, which is the, the group's most valuable player. Uh, that's a problem with anything. Uh, the greatest testament that there are a number of other areas where people have really made uh, incredibly strong contributions. Uh, our first award, uh, and when you get the uh, uh, side, uh, when you get side, uh, please come on up and we'll, we'll hand you the, the plaque. It's a uh, beautiful with a, of course, a CD on it. You know, it uh, 
I don't know if you can actually run it in your machine. It may shift a little bit, but I'm sure someone will title search that out. Uh, the, the first uh, award goes to the uh, Rookie of the Year. Uh, and uh, this person actually is an He's incredible access. person. Not only uh, did he win the year award, but he made, maintained his amateur eligibility. Uh, <laughs> he joined us last summer as, a, as an intern from uh, MIT and extended his stay for the full year and did a great job in our, in our tools work. Uh, as uh, many of you know, uh, Russell Williams is trying to go back to MIT this fall, and we hope we're lucky enough to have him come join us when he finishes his amateur uh, stint there. Uh, Russell, please come on up. Our next award uh, is the Teamwork Award, uh, and this is a real important effort uh, given the, the magnitude of what we're trying to do. Uh, this goes to someone uh, who literally uh, makes teamwork a magical event. Uh, he's, uh, he's someone who uh, is able to uh, communicate his ideas uh, both with his uh, uh, visually with his hands and uh, through great uh, manual dexterity. Uh, Jack Turk worked very hard on uh, every documentation project he attacked uh, and did a great job working uh, together with the other other folks on the documentation side and the other teams. Jack, please accept our teamwork award. someone uh, whose contributions uh, were so far reaching that I think he actually even wrote the speech that I've got here for him. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he did a, a great job, and although he was officially in our core MM Windows group, I don't think there's a project in our group that he didn't make a great contribution to. Uh, please, uh, Todd, let me come up and accept our innovation. <laughs> Did Todd choose that minute to uh, innovate in the uh, <laughs> We'll have to circle back on that. This is not going to be awarded. Uh, the next award is a, the Professionalism Award, and I'm sure this person is here. Uh, it, won't, it won't bail out. This is someone uh, whose steady effort has uh, been, uh, been evident since last summer when he really built a team up from scratch. Uh, in, a, in a group where testing meant, well, I tried it, and it seems to work. Uh, he really has elevated uh, the, uh, the level of our efforts to something that uh, I think is really uh, something we can all be proud of. It's really an asset of our group. That came particularly clear as we were trying to make our alpha delivery. Uh, James Tierney did a great job of really uh, being uh, both a stern and a steady hand through the process. James, please come up and accept our discussion. <laughs> is the initiative award, and this could be called the award for doing something we didn't want you to do until you proved how wrong we were. <laughs> uh, this goes to uh, someone who uh, made uh, uh, did some great work that made it very painful for us to explain to Bill how our document technology strategy really was coherent. Uh, not only were we doing building great technology for the future, but we're actually going to put something out right away that would be useful. Uh, John Messerly did a great job of driving the Windock project and uh, making it happen. John, please come up and accept our initiative award. Our next award we call the, uh, I don't know, I think we should circle back and actually make Todd come up here and accept his award. <laughs> Todd, we awarded you the initiative award, and you okay. uniquely would be the one to, the innovation award, would be the one to actually make the, uh, actually get awarded it twice. Uh, Todd, please. Come on, Todd. Come on, Todd. Come on, Todd.
had uh, the very challenging job of actually convincing the world that this thing we were working on was actually something they would want, and navigating through a very, very complex maze of IBM confusion and IBM uh, saying, hey, OS2 is the multimedia platform of the future, which it may well be, uh, and um, uh, really driving forward and putting a stake in the ground in our relationship with uh, Tandy. Uh, Pamela Goldschmidt did a fantastic job, not just uh, putting our relationship together, but proving that uh, uh, even companies like Ash and Tate have some amazing people that we were able to get from them. Pamela. <laughs> Our second to last award, uh, we called the Vision Award. Uh, we were tempted to call it the Vision Thing for our president, but uh, it is actually an award, not just a thing. Uh, I think it's probably not going to surprise anybody who uh, the recipient of this award is. Uh, he's the person, uh, perhaps other than Bill, who's most responsible for all of us being here, who probably about two and a half years ago, uh, first off, the uh, idea of what was then called the optical PC would be more than just a fun thing to dream about and sketch about, although we did both of those. Uh, it would be something that uh, we could really build an incredible, exciting future on. Uh, since then, he's worked uh, in uh, defatigably, uh, first in uh, making the IBM relationship work, uh, and uh, then when it was clear that IBM was uh, definitely on his, working at its own pace, uh, becoming our group architect and doing a great job of uh, really helping light the way for, for a lot of our, our work and, and thinking, helping us think through some really complex technical and architectural issues. Uh, Rick Hargrove, please come up and step please. Thank you. Most Valuable Player Award will be given by, uh, by Bill. Well, I get to give the, the award that actually has a, a, a prize to go with it. Uh, and a little clock. And that, this award actually has a little clock on it. I, it does not work, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> Once every 24 hours. Twice. <laughs> There, there's actually, to go along with sword. we have uh, 20 shares of, of Microsoft stock. Uh, this award goes to uh, a project lead who couldn't choose between being a lead and a, a developer. Uh, so he apparently did both, uh, <laughs> one during the day and, and one at night. Uh, and uh, this is someone who motivated their team through all the, the changes and delays and switches that we've made and kept it to be a, a very high morale and very uh, productive team. And I understand this is a uh, by unanimous consent that the uh, most valuable player uh, is uh, Nigel Thompson. <laughs> Tuxedo was actually the next uh, entertainment on our program. <laughs> Is he ready for this, or do you need a few minutes to cool off? Oh, it might be like two minutes. <laughs> we'll let him catch our breath. People finish your dinner, and then when he thinks he's ready, we'll come back up and have a few more comments or something from Nigel. <laughs> Memory isn't all that it might 
this. <coughs> what I thought I'd do is go through, you know, or most of you know that I spend about 98% of my time interviewing people and 2% of the time, I don't know what the other 2% spend. I should probably walk into the bathroom because building 13 has got the longest route. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bathroom. And then back again. And then by the time you get back, it's time for more coffee. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, one of the neat things about all this is I 
I've got to interview for my own boss's position. Thank <laughs> God, how good can it get? <laughs> uh, one of the things that was really funny about this, the bit about move AL with zero, well, it's true. And out of all the people I interviewed, he was the only one that knew what AL was. <laughs> oh, you don't know? <laughs> and there's probably about eight people here who'd like to have been able to interview their own boss too. <laughs> now, Greg had a, had a bit of a hard time when he, he moved up here because he had to live in a motorhome for like a month or something. But I guess it, I guess it wasn't so hard. I mean, his wife and his kids had to live in an earthquake. <laughs> Did you notice when he moved up here, he repainted his car? Does that strike you suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> it's like in California state colors or something. <laughs> anyway, of course, he did go on to introduce the weekly reports. No. Yeah, I'm pretty two weeks old, we still don't know how to do them on time. <laughs> Large, 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 large